Hello and welcome to Liberty Nation TV with your host, Jeff Charles. The congressional elections are less than 80 days away and primary season is wrapping up. This means that soon all eyes will be focused on the general elections in which Republicans are expected to retake the House. However, the outcomes of the Senate races are not so clear. I have with me Liberty Nation's senior political analyst, Tim Donner, to hash this whole thing out. Welcome to the program, Tim. Hello. Hello and good to be here, Jeff. Awesome. We're going to have a good conversation about this. We always have great, you know, polit politically wonky conversations. I agree. Yes. So Republicans, like I said, still remain they're still in a good position to retake the House and probably possibly in smaller numbers than first expected. Now, if the red wave does turn out to be more of a trickle, to what would you attribute this decline in support for GOP House candidates? Well, I think it's pretty clear that the overturning of Roe versus Wade was a, an animating event for the left. Uh, they felt that what they've been told was a constitutional right for 50 years was taken away. And that energized the old time liberals in addition to progressives. And then, of course, progressives got the most aggressive climate change action of all time in the so-called Inflation Reduction Act, which has nothing to do with reducing inflation. But it's the most aggressive climate change legislation ever. There's also cheaper drugs by federal fiat in time for the election, student loan forgiveness. And then there's the Trump factor, which, Jeff, honestly, I don't know uh, what to make of it, except to say it's a matter now of uh, when, not anymore, if he runs for president. But, you know, Biden's had a better month, to be sure, than in a long, long time. But structurally, I'm not sure that much has changed. So let me ask you this. Speaking of Trump, um, you know, Republicans were focusing on inflation, the economy, jobs and how horrible Democrats are doing. And that's what the focus has been on. But with, you know, the situation with the FBI and the Department of Justice, that's kind of put Trump more in the spotlight. So what, what effect do you think this might be having on the on the House races? Well, I think it's pretty clear from the Liz Cheney race. I think that was very revealing because the poll showed she was going to lose and lose big. But 20 to 30 points was what most people figured. A 37 point loss, I think, signals a, a boomerang effect on the Trump, the raid of Mar-a-Lago. Uh, I think there's no question that Republicans were energized to get out. I think we saw that uh, also in a couple of other primary races uh, in recent times since the Mar-a-Lago raid. So I think they've done what the what all that opposition to Trump and the hoax of the Russia collusion and everything couldn't do over the years. Uh, they've managed to make Trump more popular with their, you know, deranged opposition to the guy to the point where they raid his his uh, his home. Now, look, Rating his home on the face of it is one thing, but the way that they throw out what I call the N-word, nuclear, <laughs> and yeah. espionage. So basically, they're trying to get the public to believe that Trump is involved in hiding nuclear secrets and very likely peddling them on the open market, probably to his friends in Russia with whom he colluded to win the 2016 election. Now, look, I don't know whether Biden specifically knew about this raid, but I think everybody knows that he gave, he set Merrick Garland loose on the dogs, with the dogs, so to speak. And so even though Biden didn't know the time or place of the raid, I think it was pretty clear that he told a Garland to be as aggressive as possible and right. to rule nothing out. So now Trump is more popular, Jeff, than at any time since the end of his administration. 
Yeah, yeah. So speaking of which, I mean, because polling is showing that this raid has energized voters on both sides, yes. but more so for Republicans. Yeah. So th this could end up blowing back in their face. Now, do you think that in light of this or maybe other factors, do you think that there might be a chance that Republicans can get that red white or that, that red wave, maybe like widen their lead back to where it was before? Well, I don't really see where the red, red wave has notably subsided. Mm hmm except with the possibility of the Roe versus Wade decision, which will energize those pesky suburban women who change their minds on politics every four or eight years. Um, other than that, I don't see it uh, energizing. I don't see the Trump raid energizing the left because all they're doing is saying, well, it's about time. They've already made up their mind about orange evil man. And I think there's Republicans, including some who are notably anti-Trump, like Maryland Governor Larry Hogan is one example, uh, who have come uh, forward to criticize the raid to say that it's a frightening incursion and the crossing of a Rubicon. Uh, so there's no question that this is actually, strangely, politically, this raid is exactly what Trump needed to solidify his position in the party. And I might add, knock Ron DeSantis and other who he sees as pretenders to the throne, knock them all down. A rather large pack. Yeah, yeah, and he's definitely making full use of that. Pretty pretty smart, but but let's move on to the Senate. Now, you wrote in, in, in an article on LibertyNation.com that Democrats actually have a decent chance of holding on to the Senate. Um, now, c can you explain what, uh, why you came to that conclusion? Well, you know, national trends certainly favor the Republicans, Jeff, but the, uh, as a story I wrote in uh, on LibertyNation.com about the Senate, uh, it's the same trio of states which upended Trump in 2020, which now, ironically, remarkably, really, are standing in the way of the Republicans controlling the Senate. And those three are Pennsylvania, Georgia, and Arizona, where the trouble got started for Trump on election night 2020. So if the GOP takes control of the Senate, it will likely be by the slimmest of margins. Unlike the Democrats, they don't have the luxury of being able to break a 50-50 tie like the Democrats can with Vice President Kamala Harris. So they've got to get to 51. And they've got problems with at least three of their candidates, the ones in those states. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you did mention Herschel Walker in Georgia, Dr. Oz in Pennsylvania, Blake Masters, I believe, in Arizona. Uh, they're trailing their opponents at this moment, which is interesting because uh, Herschel Walker in particular was actually ahead of Warnock for a while, but now he's trailing. Do you see any uh, pathway where they can turn this around? Or I don't really see it, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. I think, look, Herschel, Herschel Walker is a legend in Georgia. And he's got to rely on that legendary status. But he's made a whole bunch of rookie mistakes, unforced errors, revelations about three children out of wedlock that he hadn't disclosed, uh, clumsy remarks about guns after Uvalde, uh, and other mistakes that uh, have made Republicans across the country cringe. Dr. Mehmet Oz in Pennsylvania, likewise, with his unbelievable walkthrough of a misnamed major supermarket <laughs> talking about the that. elements of crudite. Crudite. <laughs> Put that on top of the fact, Jeff, that he's seen as a carpetbagger because he really lives in New Jersey, not Pennsylvania. And he's down almost double digits to a guy who had a stroke right before the primary, John Fetterman, the Democrat, and has been largely out of sight ever since. And then in Arizona, um, the candidate Masters just has, gotten, has not gotten any traction and is trailing by eight points to the Democrat Mark Kelly. So if they lose all three of those, then their margin for error in China, trying to take control uh, of the Senate is razor thin with eight toss-up races. 
All right, so now we're at my favorite part, and we've played this game before. What predictions do you have for 2022? Well, I think it's fairly safe to predict that the Republicans will pick up between 25 and 30 seats in the House, as many as 35, as few as 20. I think that's a safe prediction. I might have thought that would be higher, but I think they have lost some traction or that the Democrats have pulled themselves at least out of the hole they were in. They've stopped digging the hole they were in, I think. The GOP already won back a lot of toss-up seats in 2020, Jeff, uh, despite Trump going down. Or the number of seats they would win this time would be larger. But I will say that the GOP picks up 25 to 30 seats and that the Senate will either remain 50-50 or go 51-49 Republican. I don't see the Democrats getting a clear majority. All right, folks. Well, there you have it from uh, Tim Donner's crystal ball. We'll see how it how it shakes out. And if he's wrong, we can all gloat at him later. But <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, we'll be. We'll but be, if I'm right, I'll be back here to talk all about it. Jeff. Yes. <laughs> yes. And we will definitely be having to have you back on to talk about it. But uh, in the meantime, thank you for joining the program. Always a pleasure, Jeff. And remember, this show is proudly sponsored by LibertyNation.com, where you can access podcasts, breaking news and analysis, and a range of biting and brilliant shows to whet your appetite for freedom and your fondness for the great American Constitution. Just go to LibertyNation.com on your browser or hit Rumble, YouTube, or check out our Liberty Nation News Roku channel. I'm Jeff Charles. Thanks for watching. This program is a production of LibertyNation.com, where truth is making a comeback. We're doing it for real. Really real. And Jeff Charles, contributor for LibertyNation.com. I think it's going to make an impact. Liberty style, fight for freedom. Oh. Maybe tracking polls sponsored by Liberty Nation for yes, Thursday. Sure. Mentioned by Dan Bongino, Rasmussen, yeah, Jordan Peterson, and others. I can do it again if you want me to. Cited in Mark Levin's American Marxism. I think we're starting to make a really big impact. Get noticed. We're doing it. Rock on. I'm gone.